Okay, but you look at the, the, and the university mentioned that from the US, 45% no more than a proof of concept. 12% ready for practical use at a time of license. And the federal rate, 46% of all inventions. I think they are underestimating. <laughs> you know, th this report was generated from the uh, Association of University Technology Manager. A portion of that kind of guy you can do is 96% for all invention, for failure rate. No. So actually, it depends on how you define failure. Okay? But 70% of those that are only a proof of concept. So they, if they only prove a concept, then they, they, they have a 72% of failure rate. For exclusive patent rights, exclusive patent rights means a lot. As my friend Pahin always told me to be interpreted. I had to look into the exclusive patent rights and then think what does that mean to the industry, to the to the development technology. Well, as you know, the, the early stage of technology actually will not have, will not help a lot immediately to the industry, right? So you, if the industry or company need to spend a lot of money, they must have all that exclusive for them. That's one quite straightforward answer. But the exclusive right actually help emerging company entrepreneur to take certain amount of market share to protect their own market, to avoid that, that the large one, the, the, the whale, to take it over. And exclusive, exclusive right actually means to help seg segmentation of market nowadays, to help to develop a certain small invention or new invention with a small scale to develop. And that is why the, uh, the IP actually reshape or restructure the industry, uh, either the quality structure or the market. Okay, then we we'll look at the exclusive pattern within the, uh, the company type in the year of 2004. More than 90% of the exclusive license for uh, license to the startup company and uh, nearly 50% to the SME, and uh, only 35% to uh, the large company. Because whenever, that could be associated with national policy, whenever you want to license exclusive to a large company, then the Congress will come up after you. Why do you want to license to this guy? <coughs> Don't you have any conflict of interest? No. But when you, you like to license to a small person, that would be fine. I think that Singapore, uh, also Taiwan has uh, the same problem. Okay, and they are, well, when, what, if you are an SME and you're an individual inventor, what can you do? Especially when you are dealing with a US patent, where you can use provisional authentication. You know it costs a lot for filing a patent, right? In the US, the average, uh, the average price you have to pay for is somewhat from 8,000 US dollars to 20,000 US dollars. But if you, you have some idea, but you are not sure, you want to license to someone, but you worry about if you file late and someone want to interrupt and cut in, right? So you find it cost, it cost you $100 to submit to for a provision application. Then with, then you are you're providing evidence for you are the, the first uh, inventor. Then within a year, you have to decide whether you want to go to formal application or formal, or formal examination. If you decide to go that, then let's, let, you can continue with the process of it. But if it, within one year, it's to someone else. They think your idea is interesting and it could be helpful. Then for an individual inventor, you can really take the advantage of this kind of uh, process. Okay, now we come to the part of uh, uh, all the innovation knowledge mapping has to rely on business technology as well as legal. That's why I call IP, it's no longer a complementary asset, it's also a core asset in the, in the company. Okay, we have uh, different innovation patterns and processes invent to innovate, it has been a European and American style. Integrate design to innovate, that's an emerging Asian style. Imitated to innovate, that happened to kind of, uh, one or two decades ago, Korean, Taiwan, Taiwanese, and uh, also the Japanese were doing the same thing. And uh, China, Chinese is claiming they want to do independent and indigenous innovation. You know, China is very hesitating to rely on anyone especially in their mindset, okay? So, what happened that technology innovation had to be IP and compatible intelligence, which I will come to the last part of the 
and also the uh, speed on the trends of knowledge mapping and integration has been the, the core contents and as well as the core competitive uh, tools you have to, to pay attention. Now we come to the last part of my presentation, but uh, about one hour, right? I'm supposed to close uh, my presentation in uh, one hour. But for IP, you know, IP based innovation strategy and, and engineering research, um, well, we do have a, a group for uh, technology innovation here. But uh, uh, since you want to continue my presentation, please go ahead and please. The cover, go ahead and do so. Well, as in the US, there's a Bible called the continuous and discontinuous innovation. Everybody has to know the disruptive innovation. Otherwise, it will fail in the MOD program. Okay? <laughs> so it uh, means that they're continuing incremental. For example, Charlie is doing a continuous in innovation, right? You know, uh, from the uh, um, point of, point of uh, 35 micrometer to nanometer to 3, 35 to 25 to 15 nanometer gradually you know, evolving into a, a more detailed, more facilitated technology. And then the, the, the CPU from a 386, 486, uh, 5, you know, 586, and so on and so forth. But uh, for most of success for the, 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 the leaping success, jumping success, a case of most likely to be a radical disrupt. And this, uh, the radical and the disrupt innovation, which I borrowed from the problem is uh, actually you can see the, the uh, the disrupt innovation come from a bottom. I mean, they use the existing technology or not as well developed technology, but they find a new market. But for the radical one, they always try, they have to be successful both in technology as well in the market. Okay? So that is the, what happened in, uh, nowadays. But what I foresee this kind of a situation with the, the, the IP mapping, actually, there are more types of innovation than these two generic types, one called continuous and discontinuous, right? But somewhere between the continuous and discontinuous, there's a lot. I mean, uh, sometimes the, 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 the disrupting innovation would only happen to certain cases. But a lot, a lot of discontinuous innovation happened because once they grew to a certain level, to a certain extent, they were merged by the large company. Of course, they, dis they disappeared, that they are not this. They are not continuing their innovation, but actually they, this another kind of discontinuing innovation uh, uh, happened in the uh, real world. Okay, so as a matter of fact, previously you used the term, you know, you used a radical or incremental hit one target, you used a radical hit the other target. But nowadays, you have the only technology we have, you can choose which one to hit which one target means the market, right? So actually you have various kind of things. I mean, a very kind of type of innovation can happen as long as you can control, you, have, you know how to forecast or how to expect the association between technology and certain market. As long as you have this kind of competitive intelligence and technical intelligence, you will be able to manage such an event. So, the segmentation of market needs to put a common sense in the business school. As we know, this, the, the strategy or the idea offering from business school is seldom work in the real world. And, but they do provide some idea, but how can you make a separate segmentation market niche? Nowadays, you must have specific technology, right? You either use a low-end technology, but you, you want to serve specific needs for a certain group of people. Nowadays, in order to protect, even protect such a small uh, market, you need IP. Otherwise, the, the big giant whale just come in and swallow you. Okay, they are so good in, in they are so good in financial strengths, they are so good in technical strengths, they can jump come jump, you know, just come up and then eat you. So the only thing you can exclude others from competing against you by having an exclusive pattern. Which you use it to exclude others from entering your market, at least pretend you to a certain extent. Okay? Ah, actually I have general one good term called Lego innovation. You guys know what's a Lego, right? The kids playing the building blocks. And actually the, the, the innovation act really depends on what kind of margin you want to set up. So uh, uh, so you have a, a lot of choice, but as long as you are you can uh, have a very clear idea what happened in the IP landscape. So on a different side you look at the technology, on the right hand side you look at the market and you use the IP as a platform, you can really design your own innovation to meet certain market needs. 